Welcome to IPEMS, a podcast series that teaches about pediatric emergency medication safety and equips providers with strategies for solutions. I'm your host, Dr. Tiffany Johnson of the Emergency Medical Services for Children National Resource Center. In this episode of IPEMS, we are joined by Dr. Steve Krug. Dr. Krug is the head of the Division of Emergency Medicine at Children's Memorial Hospital in Chicago. And today we will be discussing pediatric medication safety and challenges related to discharge instructions. As a pediatric emergency medicine physician, what are some of the challenges that you face when trying to provide clear and accurate discharge instructions to families for home medication administration? Well, one of the challenges is just the environment in which you do it. So the emergency department is one where, unless you're having a, a slow day, uh, you're rushing between patients. and. Uh, as a strategy to sort of maximize your efficiency, people tend to cut corners, and so a place where the corners are typically cut is on the discharge teaching part, um, although that's arguably one of the most important places to spend as much time as possible. So um, that, that is, that is um, uh, clearly a challenge. Uh, but there are a variety of other challenges. Uh, uh, I work in an environment where um, not quite half, but a substantial percentage of the patients I care for um, have a different language than English as their primary language, and English is the only language that I speak, so there's a real translation issue there. Um, the silent epidemic, though, is health literacy. Uh, depending upon who you read, anywhere from 25 to as many as 50 percent of our patients can't read the instructions or understand them that, uh, and, and won't acknowledge that they don't understand them. So even if they speak English and there's not a translation issue, that's a, that's a, that's a tremendous problem. Can you share with us some of the best practices that exist regarding giving discharge instructions so that we have safe home medication use? Well, uh, I think Step one is to have a structured, formalized process that assures that the right information is given. And, and that means doing something more than just handing somebody a piece of paper or even a well-thought discharge teaching tool. Um, so you need to spend enough time with the patients um, and, and explain to them, and explain to them in terms that they understand, which means that you have to ask the patient, did they understand? And better yet, because if you ask somebody if they simply understand, they may just nod their head, uh, even though they don't understand, because um, some folks are just not, they're, they're ashamed to admit that they don't understand. But to have folks tell you what, what, what you told them, so the, the sort of the teach back, or, or tell me what I told you, because that's the best way for you to have a patient explain to you what, what they've been told. Um, I think there are lots of other tools that you can do to assist understanding. Um, sometimes uh, pictures are better than words, and if you've ever put together a bicycle or any object, simply reading the words in the manual isn't going to get you there, which is why following the images or the photos can help, and so pictograms, I think, can assist. Um, since many of the patients that we discharge home are administering medications that are of the liquid variety, I think another important thing that we can do is to demonstrate how one draws up the medication and actually give the family the right device with the appropriate measurement on it and to assist them. Likewise for, as an example, um, if you're discharging a patient home with their, with their meter dose inhaler, um, demonstrate the use and, and actually have the family demonstrate to you the use as part of the discharge process. Again, this is a way where you can begin to get families to demonstrate that they understand what you've, what you've taught them. I think the last piece is whenever possible, make the link with the patient's family, with the family's medical home, whether it's their, their primary care provider, their specialty care provider, because we're a bit of a Band-Aid or a passing ship in the night here, and ultimately, um, very difficult to follow up with all of the families that we care for, and ultimately, as one final <coughs> safety net for the families that we're discharging home, if we can get the medical home to assist us in assuring that there's been understanding and also to assure that that follow-up appointment's going to get made, um, I think that's key. And when working in the emergency department, how can we improve the communication between the ED and primary care providers so that we can ensure follow-up as well as safe home medication administration? 
I think that technology can help us a lot. So uh, uh, with the electronic medical record evolving in many places, there are ways for you to communicate directly now with the communi communicate with the primary care provider electronically. Uh, the low-tech solutions, uh, faxing copies of medical records, um, uh, but, but I, I think direct communication is, is probably best and it just needs to be part of our practice. Again, tough to do that in a busy ED setting and uh, tough to sort of decide whether it's the right thing to do at 3 o'clock in the morning with a patient whose medical problem maybe is not a life or limb threatening issue but something that requires follow-up. Well, thank you so much for joining us in this episode of IPEMS, Dr. Krug, and sharing with us some of the challenges as well as some solutions for, towards discharge instructions to improve home medication administration. And thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of IPEMS. To learn more about pediatric medication safety issues in the emergency setting, as well as strategies for solutions, please tune into other episodes in the IPEMS series.